Hi, my name is Seti and welcome back to the channel where we make educational technology easy for you. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Google Classroom and a complete overview of how you can use it for online teaching. Let's dive into it with another flipped classroom tutorial. Now, Google Classroom is an incredibly powerful platform by Google, part of G Suite, that you can use to deliver online courses and teach your classes online. Now, how do you get started on Google Classroom? Well, we're going to try and answer that question today. First things first, make sure that you're logged into your Google account. Now, you'll see a screen just like this one, and then you can click on those nine dots in the top right corner. Now, if you don't see Google Classroom right there, make sure that you scroll all the way down until you find classroom and we're going to click on that and then it's opening up in a new tab now here is going to double check and make sure that you're using the correct account so let's go ahead and click on continue and now we are on Google Classroom. Now, if you are going to be using this as a teacher to present your lessons and to share materials with your students well you'll want to make sure that you select I'm a teacher so let's go ahead and click on that Everything gets set up for you and you can now start creating your classes. You can have different classrooms for different year groups or even for different subjects. Now in order for you to create a classroom you're going to want to go to the top right corner where it says plus and join or create a class and then create that classroom. So let's do that together. We're going to click on that plus icon and now we're going to create a class. Now I'm going to give this class name the EduFlip Demo Class. So let's go ahead and type EduFlip Demo Class. And we can select a section or a subject and even a room tied to this class. Now I don't have to add this, but I am going to add a subject just to show you what that does to the classroom. So let's go ahead and add a tech. We're going to click on Create. Now, while it's creating this classroom, it's creating three different things. First of all, it creates the online environment where you can share assignments and leave notes. That's what we see here by going to classroom.google.com. In addition to this, it also creates a calendar. Now, this calendar will be tied to this classroom. And whenever you push out an assignment with a due date, it gets put onto that calendar. All the participants or students of your classroom will have access to that calendar. And then it also creates an area within your Google Drive where it stores all the files. And these three things are all tied to the classroom. If you create a year three group, well then they will have a year three calendar, a year three area on Drive and a year three online environment. If you then create a year six, well it's going to create those three things for that classroom as well. Now let's have a look at what we can do in Google Classroom. We're going to close this box right here and we're going to just have a look at these four tabs at the top. Now, first of all, we have our stream. Now, the stream is a bit like a social media platform where the latest post appears at the top and it's just a stream of information. Now, this is a great place to just keep track of everything that's coming in. Secondly, we have the classwork page. Now, the classwork page, this is where you can set assignments, share files, materials, or even leave little notes to your classroom. Then we are going to go to people. Now, people is where you are going to be adding your students. Now, in addition to adding students, you can also invite co-teachers and you can even add the guardian email addresses to your students. This way, you can make sure that everyone is aware of what is expected and when assignments are due. And then finally, we have our mark or grade book. This is where all the grades that have been assigned to students are collated and you have an overview of everything your students have done and what sort of scores they've received for that work. Now let's start off by inviting a student to this class. So I'm going to go to people and I'm going to invite a student. So I'm going to click on the button here, invite student and then I can type their email address. Now, if you'd rather have your students join the classroom manually, well, there's another way you can invite students. Down here, there is a special invite and this code will allow them to join your classroom. You can also display this code from the home page by navigating to the top where it says class code and then simply clicking on display. This displays that same join code and they can then join your classroom. I'm going to manually add my students, so I'm going to click on the invite students button. Now I can type their email address. I'm going to go ahead and invite one of my accounts. Now we can now add this, send the invite. Now that person is going to receive an invitation in their email address and then as soon as they click on join, they can join the classroom. Now this is the students view. Now as you can see at the top, they also have those different tabs, but they do not have that gradebook tab. So they only have their stream, 
classwork and people so they can see the other teachers and other members of the classroom. Now let's go ahead and close this and let's go back to the teacher view. Now I'm going to go to my stream and I'm going to just write a little message to my students. I'm going to say hi everyone welcome to this class. Now before posting this message let's just have a look at the top here because what I can do is I can either send this to all students or I can manually select which students will receive this message. This is great for when you're sending out little reminders about homework or work that's due. Well you can use this to then only take those students that it applies to. I'm going to send it to all students and then next to the post button we see another drop down arrow. So when you click on this you can now save this as a draft for later and this allows you to start planning out some messages way ahead of when you're going to send them out or you can even schedule this out. Now that means that I can set it all up on a Monday morning and then these messages or reminders will be sent throughout the week. I'm going to post it immediately. So let's go ahead and click on post. And this message is now being posted onto the stream. Now you can see that the stream updates automatically and let's dive back onto the students view. Now here as you can see the student sees that message and they can now leave a public comment. So I'm going to just say thank you and leave that comment right there. Back to the teachers view you can see that that class comment has appeared right there. Now let's say that this is an inappropriate comment or they've said something that they shouldn't have said or they shared something that they shouldn't share. Well, I can always hover over that and then I have three buttons right there. These three allow me to either delete or mute this person. That means that I can stop this person from leaving any comments. I can also click on this arrow which allows me then to reply to this comment. This is very similar to a social media platform. Now let's say that we're preparing for a lesson and I want to assign them some work to get done and I want to make sure that they do it by a certain date. Well then we're going to navigate to the second tab and that's where we have classwork. Now in the classwork there's a number of different things that we can create. When I click on this create button I can create an assignment, a quiz, questions, share some materials with them or even reuse posts from other classrooms. So let's say that you've created something for year 5 and you want to reuse it with year 9 well you can use reuse post. I'm however going to just use the standard assignment. So let's go ahead and click on assignment and I can now start setting it up. Now at the top I can give it a title, my first assignment and then I can give some instructions. Please attach a document. Now these instructions can be as elaborate as you want them to be but before sending it out make sure that you've attached all the required documents. The way you do that is by going to the add down at the bottom and then adding that document. Now once you've attached a document there will be some additional choices available. So let's go ahead and select Google Drive. Now I'm going to attach a Google Sheet from my Google Drive so let's go ahead and click on this and add. Now what I really like about Google Classroom is that you can choose how this is now shared with your students. So let's go ahead and have a look at the various options. I can choose to give my students the view rights to this document and that means as I change it they will see those changes as well. I can also change it so that my students can edit and then they will all work on the same document. But what you can do with Google Classroom and that you can't do with the sharing permissions is I can make a copy for each student. Now make sure that your document is finished before you make a copy because once that copy is made you can no longer change those copies easily. You'll have to manually go into every single document. But doing it this way allows you to then assign work to the students you make a template, they fill it out and then they submit it to you. So I'm going to choose this option right here. Then at the top you can choose which classroom and which student you share it with. So here as I only have one classroom I cannot select a second one right there but I can select the students that will receive this. So I can choose to differentiate the work and maybe only send this to three students and then send a different document to another group of students. I'm going to send it to all students. You can choose to have points linked or attached to this document. I'm going to actually leave these points because that will allow me to then demonstrate the gradebook. I'm also going to set a due date and I'm going to set that due date to tomorrow. So by tomorrow I want them to submit a document. 
I'm going to attach a topic to this. Now the reason you might want to consider adding topics is so that it makes it easier for the students to find the classwork later. So when they go to classwork, they'll have an extra additional option to choose the topics. If you do not set a topic, it might be difficult for them to find it. So I'm going to add edtech as a topic and then you can add a rubric. So let's go ahead and click on a rubric and we're going to create a new rubric. So these are the different criteria. So I just want them to have a file that will give them one point. And I'm going to add another criterion. I want them to type into the file and if they can do that, they will get the remaining nine points. There we go. At the top, we're going to click on save. And this rubric is now linked to this assignment. That means the students will see what they have to do and how they can earn their grades. Now, once everything's set up and we're ready to assign it, we have to decide do we want to assign it now or do we want to schedule it? Now we can click on assign here or drop down and then schedule it later. I'm going to assign this now. Google Classroom is now creating copies and sending it to the students and it has been assigned. Now, as you can see here on the left hand side, I can select the different topics. Now, as you attach topics to your assignments, it'll make it much easier for the students to keep track of which topics they have to finish working on. You can also see at the top here, we have our class drive folder and our Google Calendar. Now that is, as I mentioned before, linked to this classroom. If I click on the Google Calendar, it's going to open up this specific calendar. Now, as you can see here, this calendar is linked to that classroom. And because I set a due date, you can see that the assignment is due tomorrow. Now we're going to close this calendar for now and we're going to have a look at the student view. The student now sees two additional things on their Google Classroom. Now, first of all, they'll see the assignment right here in their stream. Now, when they click on that, it sends them to the assignment. Here they have the description of the assignment and then the rubric. So file will earn them one point and then type into the file nine points. Okay, so if they want to do that now, they can open up this document. There we go, we have the file. I'm just going to type hello, and then I'm going to close that document. Now I can choose to hand in my document. So I'm going to hand it in to the teacher. There we go, do you want to submit it? Hand in. Now, as soon as I hand in my document as a student, I no longer have editing rights to this document. Not until my teacher returns it to me. So that means that once I hand in the work, I can no longer change it. Now back to the stream, you will see that I have an upcoming tab as well. Now, because I've just handed in that work, it says no work is due soon. That means that everything that had to be done has been done. I can also go to the classwork page here and then I can keep track of the different topics and when they have to be completed. In addition to that, I have the view your work tab and this will show me everything I've created and everything I've submitted to my teachers. This is a beautiful overview of your entire portfolio of work and what you've created as a student. Now back to the teacher view. We are now in the teacher's view and let's go ahead and open up that assignment and let's see if our students have actually completed this. You can see here it says one student has handed it in and no students have been assigned to this work without handing in their work. So let's go ahead and click on this handed in. I immediately see which student has handed in their work. I can now open this work and I can start grading it. Now, in addition to grading this work, I can leave comments and feedback to make sure that they are really understanding the task. So let's go ahead and start marking this. So here we have the file. Okay, they will get one grade for that and they've typed into it, so they get nine for that. You can also add a private comment and say, great work. Let's post that comment. I can now choose to return this to the student and ask for additional changes, or I can simply click on this drop down box and I can return multiple submissions. So let's say that you've had 10 students and they've all submitted their work and you want to return everything. Well, then you would select this button. Now back to the student view. Now, because I have left a comment, the student is going to see that there is a comment here linked to this assignment. Now, they can also see that by manually going into their work. So here you will see this was their work, it was handed in. I can click on view assignment and there you go. They will see my private comments and they can respond to this. Now let's have a look at the grade book. So we're going to go back to the teacher's view and we're going to go back to our main page. Now that I've graded a single piece of work from a student, I can dive onto the marks tab. So let's go ahead and go into marks. 
And here you will see the various assignments and then also the marks attached to this. So here we can see this student had a 10 out of 10 for this assignment. So this is a great view of everything that's been completed and it will even show you some class averages. Now back to the classwork page. Now let's say that you're ready to share some materials with your students, but you don't necessarily want to turn it into an assignment. Well, you can do so here as well. Now let's go ahead and click on create. And let's just share some materials with them. So we're going to go to material and then we can give our material a title. So let's just type some information about Google Drive. Let's go ahead and add that file. We're going to find it in our Google Drive and we're going to give them the information about Google Drive. We can again attach a topic so we can select add tech or we can create a new topic right here. I'm going to create a new topic and I'm going to say info and let's go ahead and post that. Now when my student goes to their homepage, they will see that I've shared a new material. Now each of these assignments has their own different icons and that will help your students to really see what type of post you've left. Now when they go to classwork, they will also see that there is now a second topic there and there is also some information here. They can go to view work or they can just simply open up this document and look at the information that was shared. And then finally, when it comes to really making your online space a fun place for your students to be, you can customize your classroom. Now there's two things that you can do to customize your classroom. You can either customize the way it looks, or you can also customize the way the stream works. Now let's look at the customizations of the look first. So here we can select a different theme for our classroom. And then we can just select one of these themes right here. Now I'm going to select this one. And then as soon as I've changed that, you will see that the header also changes. You can also upload your own photographs. In addition to that, you can upload GIF or GIF files and then you have some movement at the top of your classroom. Now in order for you to change the way the stream works, we're going to have to go to the cogwheel at the top. And then as we scroll down, you'll see here that we can change the way our stream works. Here we can now choose who can post on my stream. They can post and comment, or maybe only teachers can post and comment on the stream. We can also change the way classwork is represented on the stream and we can show condensed notifications, show attachments or hide notifications altogether. This is up to you as a teacher to set this up for your classroom. Then when it comes to the marking, we can also choose the overall mark, points or weighted by category and we can add various mark categories. So we can here change this and then that will save us time whenever we're using the mark functionality. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, scroll down into that comment section below. Let me know, are you using Google Classroom? What are you using it for? And what are some of your favorite tips and tricks that you would like to share with all the other teachers watching this video? Now, once you've left your comments, scroll back up, make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you can be notified of future videos. I thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.